Hey guys, welcome to part 5 of this WordPress tutorial. In this part, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own custom widget section for your clients to be able to enter in their own content without screwing up the rest of their site. So if you look on the screen here, you'll see I have these three built-in widgets here that the client can easily go in and edit in the back end under Appearance, Widgets. And you have these Home Widget 1, Home Widget 2, and Home Widget 3. Home widget 1, I have a default calendar widget. Home widget 2, I have some custom HTML, which your client can add in their own scripts, their own custom things without screwing up the theme. Um, and then in widget 3, I just have a basic search widget. All these are standard WordPress widgets. And of course, if they want to change these, we can go in, change them easily without adding any extra code or anything like that. Um, why didn't that work? <sighs> there it is. There's the exclamation point. Okay, so let's get right to it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add in a space uh, right below this hero photo to put in our widgets. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Uh, we're going to go over to a project file into the theme folder. And we are going to go to the landing page. Okay. So this right here is where all the content is. And this jumbotron is that jumbotron. So we're going to put it right between. So we'll just put spaces there. We'll call it div class. Um, and say it's a row. And then within that row, we will put a container. And within that container, we're going to put a, actually, I messed up. We're going to put container on the outside and the row on the inside. And then within the row, we are going to put uh, three columns. So we're going to use bootstrap, say call, dash. So on the small screen, they're going to take the whole width. So we'll say 12, call. On sorry, extra small screens will take up the whole screen. On columns that are medium width, so anything above a tablet, um, they will be divid divided up into three. So four, because there'll be three widgets. One, two, three. So four times three is twelve. So there'll be three like that. Okay, and we'll go ahead and uh, name this. Uh, Put this in a div, so div class equals widgets. And we'll name each of these widget. Okay. And um, so now we should have three empty spaces that you can't see because there's no content in them. Um, so just to kind of show it's there, we'll just widget one, widget two, widget three. Okay, make sure it loads right. Okay. And that because, yeah. So this is actually in the small width. Um, hmm. yeah, that is quite okay. We'll just have to do that. Okay, so these are three widgets. Um, and then usually what I like to do is put them in the center because they're almost never going to be left aligned. So we'll do that. And now you can kind of see where each widget's going to go. Okay. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to put the code in here that's going to pull dynamically a widget. So uh, I'll be right back. I'm going to get the code for you guys. And uh, see you in a second. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is initialize the widget functionality 
on our WordPress theme. So to do that, we're going to go over to our functions.php file, and we're going to do it after we register the menu. And you're going to paste in this code right here. And I'll put this code in the description down below so you can just copy and paste. Uh, essentially, um, let me just clean up. Essentially what this is, is I put a comment here, register our sidebars and widgeted areas, but it's not really a sidebar, so we'll just say that. Okay, so this initializes, this is going to initialize our widgets. Um, WordPress functionality has a function called register sidebars, um, which are the widgets, because usually most of the time the widgets are actually going to be in the sidebar of most blog themes, which is why they're called sidebars. Um, but in our case, they're just going to be on the home screen right there. So you're going to put this code, it says the name of the widget. So this is going to be the widget for the home page, so widget one, and we're actually going to put three different ones there. So we need to have one for each one. So we have home widget one, home widget two, and home widget three. And I have a name and have an ID. So the ID is what we'll call it by um, when we're coding and developing. The name is what it'll show up as on the user interface side of things. So this is what your client will see. Okay. So we'll go ahead and save our functions file. And back on our landing page, now we need to put where it says widget one, we need to insert the code to dynamically pull the first widget. And I'll have this code down below in the description so you can just copy and paste. Essentially what this says is if there is an active sidebar, which is the function register sidebar of home widget one, then uh, dynamic sidebar, print this widget. Fairly simple, and we'll go ahead and copy and paste that for widgets two and widgets three. Just changing out the numbers. Go ahead and save that. Now, if we go to our uh, back end, we refresh it. We should see Not that. <sighs> what is going on? Why isn't it loading? Oh, that's why it's not loading. Because we called the function, or we defined what the function is, but we never actually called the function. Um, so we have to call it. Uh, one second. We have to add this line of code to our functions.php. So after you define the function of uh, alphabet widgets init, we're going to add the action widgets init alphabet widgets init. Now on our admin page, we should see it pop up. There it is, under appearance. Okay, and now we have the three widgets that we defined here, and you can see home widget one, how we named it, home widget two, and home widget three. Okay, so luckily for us, WordPress has a ton of great built-in widgets that clients would love to use. A popular one is Calendar, um, so we'll go ahead and just drag over Calendar into home widget one. And we'll just name this calendar, save. And um, another one would be, let's see, the, well, to be honest, most of my clients end up using their own either plugin to generate uh, a widget or an HTML element. So here, your client can enter in their own HTML, which sounds dangerous, but since this is a widgeted section, this will not break the rest of your code. So WordPress knows that this can be easily edited by your clients, so it's not going to let it mess up the whole website. Um, it's great for external scripts and external plugins that they want to put in. Uh, you just put in a little widget section for them. They can copy and paste, and they can change it anytime they want. I know for a fact that one of my clients has a 
they do like a email giveaway um, and they change it every month so I put in this HTML section in their widget and they're able to go in and copy and paste their code from their outsourced developer or their outsourced program that generates a little pop-up box in this widget section uh, so we'll just use this as an example say uh, widget 2 and we'll give the content of uh, span uh, style equals color let's say red two now they're not um hold on actually so if we hit save and we hit save on this one if we go back to our home page they should be loading up in these three sections okay so you have the calendar and you have the widget two and this is correct so you see the title and then you see the html um, so if you notice there are these little bullet points that's because by default widgets are list items um, so if you see right here it is considered a list item so what you got to do is add a class that says widget li um, list style none and those will go away Go ahead and copy that rule and we put it into our um, CSS in our main.css. So it'll be in the home page styles after the Jumbotron. Go ahead and save that. Make sure that works. Okay. Now we have a calendar widget, an HTML widget, and a blank spot for another widget. Now, if you would like to add in something in this blank spot, if they don't want to put in a widget, you can easily do that. So where it says, if it is, uh, if there is a widget in place, do this. Um, you can say, is you're going to put in, make sure you're in PHP, else, and then, uh, I guess you don't really need that. Else, we'll just say widget three, and then end the if rule. All right, and so now widget three pops up, but this can be anything, obviously. Um, but if we add in a third widget in here, let's just say we put in a search bar, and we say search, save that. refresh the page and the search bar shows up okay and so that is how you put in your own widgets and a WordPress theme and obviously there's a lot of styling that you would want to do but I'm not going to cover that in this video since that's more of a CSS kind of thing you can kind of figure out what needs to be changed just like the list item style I showed you there's plenty of things you could do you might want to center this calendar you might want to put little line borders around each one so that they're separated um, it's all up to you. But. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, make sure you hit that like button. Comment down below if you liked it. Tell me what you want to see next. Um, but if not, if you don't comment anything, what I have planned for next week is I'm going to show you how to create custom short codes so you can easily create function and functionality within your themes without having to do crazy complex coding and crazy loops. So I'm gonna show you a very easy, simple way to create your own custom um, shortcuts. All right, so I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.